Hello, Alton from microgrinder.com here doing a free leak finder review video for one of my students on my Crush Online Micro Stakes course on Udemy. So those of you that aren't aware, I do have Udemy courses and for any students that are taking any of my paid Udemy courses, they just have to follow some basic requirements and they can submit a video for me to do a free leak finder review for them. And so that's what I'm doing for a student named Dang. He is enrolled in my Crush Online Micro Stakes Poker course. And we're going to do a free 20 minute leak finder review video for him. And so let's go ahead and get started. Dang is playing on BWIN Poker and he has two tables of 10 and L6 max and he'll be loading up a third one about five or six minutes into the video so I'm going to do a 20 minute leak finder review video for him. Now for those of you that aren't enrolled in my classes and you're interested in the service or the courses, check out the description bar below because I have all the courses listed for 90% off for $5 instead of the regular price, price of $49. So let's go ahead and get started and let's start up this video and see how he's doing. So it looks like you're pondering a call here and you make the correct move, you fold, tend to suit it, even against a min raise, it's just too weak to call, so I like that fold there. So pocket sevens, interesting spot here. We have four limpers in the pot. I think you can raise or you could just over limp and just limp as well. Um, it's right on the cusp of, of being a value hand where you can raise versus being a hand where you just want to limp in for cheap for set mining. Now I see that you do raise and I think raising is fine. And let me go ahead and pause the video. So I think if you are going to raise, I think you need to raise a little more than 60 cents. And typically what I like to do is three big blinds for my raise plus one for each limper. So since we have four limpers, that'd be 70 cents. And then because I'm out of position in the blinds, I'd like to add on another big blind. So I would be making my raise here to 80 cents at minimum. And the reason for that is it looks like you're at a table where you're a bunch of the players there. Almost all the players there are probably loose passive fish and some of them are gonna be loose passive calling stations. So you want to maximize your fold equity because what you're doing is you're not raising it up for value. You're really raising it up trying to take down this dead money in the pot right now by maximizing fold equity. The um, last thing you want to do is get four callers and be out of position in a bloated pot with a pair of sevens because let's face it, a lot of the flops are really just going to miss your sevens. You're only going to hit your set roughly about one in eight times. And so if you're only going to hit your set that often, the rest of the time you're going to be folding because a lot of overcards are going to hit and you're going to end up just check folding a big pot. So that's why I bet a bit more. So interesting spot, we get a limp re-raise here, so a limp 3-bet. Um, and let's go ahead and see what you do. So it looks like you're not entirely sure what you want to do. Um, you just default for an all-in. Not a huge fan of the all-in. Um, I think that it's a bit excessive. So let's go ahead and pause the video and talk about this again. I think you're getting good odds just to flat. And the reason why I prefer flatting here is that 50 more cents you can call this very small 3-bet and you're getting really good odds for set mining odds. You're getting easily over 10 to 1 on your money. So you can profitably call just to set mining based upon how much money this opponent has behind. And if he's showing that he's aggressive, maybe he's going to continue to be aggressive post-flop if you hit a set. Also, we have this player here that limped and called your raise. If you call, you might get him to come along as well with a weak hand. And if, again, if you hit a set, you might get paid off by both of these opponents. Now, if you think you have full equity, I don't mind four betting, but I think you don't need to jam all in because when you're jamming all in here, you're pretty much always going to get the weaker end of a decent player's range to fold. So if he's playing deceptive and he's limping to induce a bluff, to induce a raise with maybe aces, kings, queens, or ace, king, then you're only going to get called by the top of his range against a decent opponent and the rest of the time everybody else is going to fold and typically the same thing for weaker opponents too unless they're really fishy and so when you jam all in a majority of the time you're only going to get called by really strong hands and the weaker part's going to fold now if you do decide to four bet like you did i think if you made it around 220 to 250 that's going to get the job done if you're going to try to maximize fold equity because let's face it when you are raising you're raising as a bluff you don't want to get called with an all-in because the majority of the time when you get called it's going to be um, with a really strong hand that your opponent has ace 10 off like that raise pretty standard there 
And oddly enough, he does call and he shows up with pocket sixes. So I'm definitely taking a note if I'm you. Um, this guy is looking to be a really, really big fish and he just reloaded. So definitely type of opponent that we want to attack and don't give him any respect at all. It looks like you're taking a note, so that's good. And I'd definitely be tagging him if you can tag on this side as well. I'd be tagging him as a fish. So while there's some dead time, um, for those of you that aren't aware, I do have four poker courses on Udemy. Three of them are paid and one is free. I have a free poker fundamentals course. I have three other paid courses and the first one is my Crush Online Micro Stakes course, which is a comprehensive course on beating the micro stakes. Another one is Essential Math for No Limit Hold'em and another one is on developing poker reads um, by table selection, seat selection, and using HUD stats and also understanding basic player types and so you know if you haven't seen them check out the promotional codes that I have listed down here in the description bar and go check out the courses I guarantee these courses are very comprehensive and you won't be disappointed especially at the five dollar price tag so now it looks like Dang has a third table up and running so hopefully we'll be getting some more action here again it looks like this guy showed up with just pure junk again so he's looking like um, you're pretty much just a really bad player a combination of a loose passive colonization and sometimes a bit of a bad aggressive maniac so it looks like he exhibits both of those types of characteristics and I like this call here um, definitely never folding with Queen 10 off and then when he checks definitely like the bed now in regards to the bet sizing I don't think you need to make it that big uh, 30 cents into 38 I think you could have bet a little less trying to get him to call you with any of his weaker hands, with his draws, um, his flush draws, his gutter straight draws, his up down straight draws. So if you bet if you bet a little less, maybe you'll get called by worse and maybe get a little more value. But um, overall, I think the bet sizing is fine. Blind versus blind. Jack nine looks like you're pondering a raise. Jack nine suited middle position. I think it's just too weak to be opening. Um, and let me go ahead and pause the video again. So I think it's a bit too weak to be opening. Yes, we do have a fish. A, well, let's just go ahead and call him a whale because he's a whale, not a fish. Um, and we have him in the big blind, but we also have some potentially good opponents, um, you know, directly to our left. We don't know anything about him. He looks like a bit of a fish. Um, this opponent may be a fish as well, but this opponent looks to be um, fairly ruggish stats, you know, 29, 25. He looks to be a bit of an aggressive lag, so we got to watch out for him, um, you know, three betting us or re isolating, trying to get heads up with this fish. So, in general, I'd be folding this hand. It's just too weak to be opening a middle position, and we're going to find ourselves in a lot of tough spots post flop. 9-6 offsuit. It looks like big blind versus limp button. I like the bet. Middle pair. King's going to be, you know, not in too much of his range. And we do get a call from the small blind. Now, it looks like you're doing a delayed C bet up here on table two. So I'm not a huge fan of the delayed C bet on the turn here because, yes, we did get a fold from this opponent, but a queen is easily in either of their ranges. Um, I don't think either of them are betting a queen on the flop. So when the queen hits the turn, yes, the queen is definitely in the ranges. And also, this opponent's never folding. He's a calling station. So he's going to call you down with any pocket pair. And he's going to call you down with king high. He's going to call you down with a weak ace. He's going to call you down with trip queens. And, you know, any pocket deuces through through pocket whatever that he doesn't hit the board, he's going to call you with as well. So you're never getting him to fold. Like the check down here on table three. Like the three bet with ace king. Um, one thing to note with the three bet here is that I think the sizing's a bit small. When we're playing at the micro stakes, we can play exploitively and just base your three bet sizing. When somebody does a fishy uh, min raise pre flop, just base your your pre flop three bet size based upon what a standard three bet size would be. So I'd make it around ninety cents because we want to maximize getting value with it against bad opponents. And this guy looks like a bad opponent. He looks like a, a bit of a weak type passive player. And so just make it 90 cents. And if he calls, you're going to maximize value. And you're going to get more than if you bet 60 cents. And like the check down here, um, you know, nothing but um, 
I believe third or fourth best pair so I just like checking that down here with showdown value and then you face a massive four bet so at this point um, this guy four bets you over 5x so yeah this is an easy fold I think a leak that a lot of players have is that they tend to overplay ace king and so a lot of people will say well I three bet ace king I can't fold to a four bet and so when somebody four bets you cold like this opponent did um, lots of times at the micro stakes you're only going to be up against aces kings or queens and when sizing is that large it's probably always aces or kings and so you know you are a 20% favorite he's an 80% favorite and you're going to be getting it all in pre-flop as a dog so I like that fold uh, four six offsuit I think you could open but I think folding is fine as well like the fold, 5-4 off, junky hand, like the check here. Now against this opponent I hope that you bet out because this guy has a VPIP 100%. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of that check there. And let me pause the video. So I think that you should have bet the flop because you have a backdoor straight draw, a four run runner straight draw, and you have a runner runner flush draw as well and an overcard. So remember this guy's limping 100% of his range. So he's not going to hit this flop that often with 100% range. And so you need to start going for value against this opponent because he's shown to be super fishy. And so um, definitely would like a bet on the flop and hoping that you follow up with a bet on the turn since you didn't bet the flop. And definitely don't like the check down there as well. And definitely uh, not a fan of checking the river either because you just missed some thin value. I think we could have got probably at least two to three big blinds out of this opponent, maybe even four or five. So just remember, if you're facing an opponent like this that has their 100% range, then you definitely need to be going for value whenever you can. So um, you know what? Um, if you think you can get some thin value, then get some thin value out of that opponent. Like that you're taking a note of this massive four bet. So he's queen hoping that you're going to pop this up um, at least 40 cents and I would be happy if he even raised higher because this guy's never folding. I might even make it 60 or 70 cents because he's going to call anything. And we get flat by uh, 50 slash zero and then we get this opponent calling as well that's really fishy and then he, he three bets you here and so um, he limps you raise and he three bets. Now I'm not a huge fan of flatting here and let's talk about why we need to be raising here. So this guy's shown the ability to three bet lightly and two bet and four bet lightly with a very wide range. So we need to be pumping it up and looking to get it in pre-flop with ace queen suited against him because you're near the top of your range and you're going to dominate a lot of his range. Um, yes you could have a pocket pair but he could also have a lot of weaker hands as well. So I personally like seeing that he only has 521 behind and that he called your jam earlier when there was only 110 in the pot and you made it 10. He called with pocket sixes there. I like just jamming all in here. Um, I don't mind these opponents folding because when they fold we increase our equity. When they stay in the pot we decrease our equity because our equity share decreases with more people in the pot. So when we get them to fold we take down an extra 80 cents in the pot that they're folding and we get heads up against this fish. So right here I just like re-raising and getting it all in versus this guy. So either make it around three dollars or just jam all in versus him. And then this 50 zero calls again so we you know this guy's looking to be super fishy as well. And unfortunately you just miss out on this flop. 
and then of course now you just have to fold and this just really um, reiterates why we should raise the fact that he couldn't call that flop shows me that he didn't even have a pair so when he couldn't call on a deuce five deuce flop it shows that he didn't even have a pair um, I believe if he had a pair of threes a pair of fours a pair of sixes a pair of sevens he would have called that flop um, so you know he probably had a weaker king a weaker ace or a weaker queen type of a hand where queen x king x or ace x that you dominated him with and you probably would have taken down the pot off of him so pocket aces hope you're bumping it up here and making it bigger definitely like that raise like that you bumped it up you notice that he's calling everything so you're making it more and then we have um, a ruggish opponent here he makes a standard 3x, he flats again, hoping you make it, um, you know, you raise again, you 4x it, you make a 4-bet four, um, four with around $3, like that sizing. And then when this guy jams, he probably always has kings, aces, or queens. And um, funny how this guy comes along again, so we'll go ahead and see what happens, and you end up taking it down. Pocket nines like the raise, and let's go ahead and take a look. So he ended up having pocket kings, so you coolered him, but again, see this guy was going all in with 10-8 offsuit, so shows the need uh, with our ace-queen hand where we needed to get bumped up against him, but um, good job winning that pot. Always nice to take down a massive pot and cooler somebody. Pocket nines, like the raise here, but I think on the button at a 10 and or higher, you can always just make it a 2x or 2.5x, the big blind. You don't have to do 3x. Um, and the reason for that is that we should be doing that with our entire range, and we're risking less when we're just looking to steal the blinds. Like the fold. And I like the C-bet, um, two-thirds pot looks fine to me. Pretty standard value bet there. Seven four off, like the fold. Looks like you're pondering a raise. I'm not a huge fan of raising here. I'm hoping that you just check it. Jack-9 off is just too weak to be raising here, and your bet sizing, again, is a bit too small. So if we think about it, uh, Jack-9 off is just as a strong hand. Uh, against opponents that are never folding, you have no fold equity, just go ahead and check. Um, and if you are going to raise, you need to make it um, a bit more than that. You have two limpers, so and then you're out of position to one. So I would have probably made it 60 cents myself. But personally, I just would have checked the Jack-9 off. And on this flop, you're pretty much going to be giving up on this hand. 3-9, uh, flopping two pair, top bottom, hoping that you raise it up because this is a bit, a bit of a wet board texture. I like that raise there. And then when he calls, it's an interesting spot. And I like the call with the queen king against a button range. Here, folding's fine. I think calling is fine as well. I think you're going to chop a lot. Now, this is an interesting spot where he shows up and he he goes ahead and leads out after you uh, raise him on the flop when he c bets. So he could, yes, he could have the straight. Um, he could have two pair. He could be on the flush draw. It's really hard to stay blind versus blind. So I like the call there. I like the fold there. And when he checks, I think you need to go for some thin value there, maybe just under half pie, half size pot um, to get him to call. Um, thinks, I think we missed a little bit of thin value, but checking is fine as well. So we're 19 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and end the leak finder review session, and let's sum up with some areas to really focus on. Um, first one is focus on your bet sizing, so pre-flop and post-flop. Take a look at the course lectures on bet sizing. Need to work on those a little bit. Also, um, take a look at your ranges for 
raising limpers and also um, preflop ranges as well. So take a look at that as well. And then also um, in general, um, take a look at bluffing and when it's a good time to bluff versus when it's a bad time to bluff. And then lastly, also take a look at your thin value type of a hands. Now that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, thanks for watching. And for those of you on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. This has been Outen with MicroGrinder.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.